John Carter, a STA evangelist who has led thousands of people to Christ, would surely know who Christ is, wouldn't he? LR, God, the undisputed and incontestable Lord of the heavens and the earth, and all that is found between and beyond it, bless you and your family with the best of this world and the hereafter for your advocacy of reconciliation among mankind and their respective religions. That's, that's nice, isn't it? It's a beautiful prayer. Thank you. Now, you know, Allah is the same God that the Christian worships, I believe. In the Bible that is used by people who speak in those uh, Middle Eastern countries, the word for God is Allah. And so obviously the person who is sending me this letter is a person who follows Islam. Okay. Allah is the same God that the Christian worships, I believe. Uh-oh. How can an evangelist for Christ forget that Christ has a father, thus automatically excluding Allah as being his father? Yes, I understand very well that the word Allah is used in some Bibles to refer to God. Word origins is not the subject under review. The subject is whether or not the God of the Quran is the same as the God of the Bible. The clear, unambiguous answer is no. The Allah of the Quran is not the God of the Bible. Dwight Nelson, pastor of Pioneer Memorial Church at Andrews University, and one of the best known Seventh-day Adventist speakers knows Jesus, doesn't he? By the way, I got some letters from viewers after that last teaching. And one viewer said, don't you know that the, that the name Allah is a name for Lucifer? Oh, I hope you never, I hope you never, 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 never embrace that. Allah, listen carefully now, Allah is closer to Elohim the Hebrew name for God, then is our English word God. In fact, hold on to your seats. The English name God is a Nordic pagan God. We've taken a pagan God's name and we said, that's the name of our God. And we all call him God. That's a pagan. It's a Nordic pagan myth. So don't you ever get pushed into the corner where you're saying, Allah is a demonic name. Allah is the name of the living God. Allah is the creator of the universe. Allah is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ishmael, Jethro, Job, and even Balaam. Whoops. First of all, the subject is not about word origins, but who this Allah is. Allah in the Quran has no son. God in the Bible does have a son. How can they be the same being? Secondly, the name God has nothing to do with some Nordic pagan god. Wikipedia has a good article on the word's origin. But again, that is not the point under discussion at all. Pastor Nelson, please show me even just one place in the Bible where God is called the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Ishmael. Doesn't Galatians 4.30 show the position of the bondwoman and her son? If you are adding to the word of God, be careful that you repent as Revelation 22:18 warns what will happen to those who add to his word. The conclusion I have reached from my personal interaction with these SDA brethren is somewhat fantastic, but it is that this new gospel is not out to lead Muslims to Jesus, the Son of God, and have them become Christian, but it is to lead them to Jesus as something other than the Son of God, make them feel good about being a Muslim, and make SDAs comfortable being called Muslim too. In an article written by Asif Gokoslan on MaranathaMedia.com, a lady commented, Oh, how I love reading stories of the conversion of Muslims and Jews. He replied, Honestly, I do not convert, but I became real Muslim when I found my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ, and He is right there in the Quran. I am a Muslim or I became real Muslim when I accepted Jesus Christ. We as a Muslim, we do not need to convert. We just need to see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Quran. Here is one concrete example of a Muslim who responds to this new gospel by declaring that Muslims do not need to convert. So are there any SDAs upholding Jesus Christ as the only Savior and yet still reaching out to Muslims? William Johnson gives mostly good advice 
except the non-Christian part, in the October 2010 issue of Adventist World. May we repent, stop being ashamed to call ourselves Christians, and lead all people to the only way to the one true God, His only begotten, Jesus Christ, the Son of God.